Hope, man. How you doing? I'm great, man. How are you? I'm good, brother. I'm good. I appreciate you coming on the show, man. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Here before the fam, you pumped for your set? Yeah, I am. I'm really, I'm actually really excited. Like a couple days ago, I was like, wasn't exactly ready, but now I'm, I'm charged up. I'm ready to do it. Why, why don't you think you were ready? You just did a different mindset or? I haven't rapped in like three years. Yeah, I was so, going to ask you about that. So I I've been that. in full producer mode, like just strictly like making beats for other people. So I've kind of like, I kind of like let the rapper part of my brain just like die like i had to really re like go back and re like memorize hello my songs and stuff like that <laughs> yeah I, I was gonna ask you because that, that's funny you bring that up but it's like i talked to a lot of people who rap and produce and it's like it i would imagine it's hard to kind of balance those two worlds right so did you start rapping or producing first like what was your first step into music i started rapping and um was just strictly rapping didn't know how to make beats uh, and then like on my second album uh basically i started like teaching myself how to make beats and uh -huh. then from there was kind of like juggling production and rapping but was definitely more focused on rapping and was like busy you know what i'm saying so i kind of made beats like out of necessity or just like when i had the time to mm -hmm. but i wasn't like i wasn't really focused as a producer until like 2018 2019 where i was like all right i'm gonna really like lock in as a producer and like just started spending a lot more energy like in that field yeah i talked to a lot of it's funny i talked to a lot of rappers who say the same thing about production it's like i started producing out of necessity because right it, dude, beats are expensive man or you can't get them or you can't right. find producers it's so much easier to just pick up that skill by yourself exactly it, and that, and that's exactly was the reason like we had an amazing producer for our first album and then like his beats like were too we couldn't afford them yeah and we were like well we're gonna make the second album and i wanted to make stuff that sounded more like the stuff i wanted to rap on like wanted to do more soul samples and chop mm. stuff up and like in that vein so it was really like it was yeah out of necessity that it happened it was pretty it was pretty interesting that's another thing too because it's like as a rapper nobody's gonna understand the exact style of production that you want better than you well it's funny because every once in a while you get chemistry with someone that like like it clicks and there because you like i'll spend hours on my beats right and yeah then sometimes if someone sends me a beat like it's very rare that it does happen but there's a few producers i have chemistry with that are like they'll send me a beat and i automatically want to rap to it like mm. even now when i haven't been in my rapper mode which is like very very rare like sometimes it is nice to hear someone else's production but i do feel like i have a good idea of what i want to like what i want my stuff to sound like and like also what I have an ear for other people like oh, I think so-and-so would sound good on this beat like yeah. you know that type of like placement production or whatever I'm glad you just said that that you'll spend hours on a beat because I feel like there's this common misconception now in like the world of hip-hop hip production for sure and not, not to say that this is necessarily a bad thing but I think a lot of it is because of like the a lot of the YouTube community that started making beats and doing the streams and it's like busting out 10 beats in 20 minutes like yeah. all that shit made yeah. a lot of kids with FL Studio think that they have to be making beats in like two minutes but it's mm -hmm. I think it's good to hear that you as a successful producer you're somebody who still sits down and spends like a long time on a beat yeah it's funny I feel like the better I got at making beats the more time I've spent which hmm. it almost seemed like reverse like alright I'm gonna get better I'm gonna just be able to whip out beats like non-stop like do 30 in a day you know what i'm saying but no yeah. really like the more i started to learn and the more like um like detailed my ear got the more time i really spent making beats and like working on the little the little things when before like i would have let something fly with just just like minimal whatever minimal drums or minimal whatever and now i'm like really spending hella time to make beat you know what i'm saying make yeah. my beats like thorough and there's like a lot going on you know? is there like a specific part in a beat that takes more time than everything else like does it take you more time to come up with the melody or does it make the drums like what is the more difficult and like most time consuming part of a beat yeah that's a great question actually um I'll move this mic down for a minute Pick it on. yeah for sure you gotta let the people see me <laughs> i know um i would say for me hmm you said the most time or that's difficult? Most time consuming. Probably melody and and then drums, just because of the detail in there. Chords come really easy to me. Bass lines come really easy to me. Leads hmm. come easy. Vocal chops easy. Drums and like actually 
put in a melody on the on the beat take a little more time from me that's interesting that you say like bass lines come easy to you do you come from like an instrumental background at all or did you just start with production well family like all i come from a, a like a family of musicians like uh-huh. all my family played music played music uh they're all musicians like play multiple inter- instruments but i never um i've never taken a lesson and um I, i'm all self-taught you know what i'm saying youtube and everything like that but I, I think it's just like a love for it and um just coming from like a musical family but i didn't really like i didn't even really start playing music to like i was in like outside of out of high school basically you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying i didn't really start making beats till like i was like 19 or something like that you know yeah. like a little bit later i was like playing sports and like once my sp- once my athletic career died then it, <laughs> I, I i like went into like making music basically that's so many people yeah there's so many people i've talked to like yeah i want to hoop i wanted to yeah. play football or whatever and then it's once that part of you dies you're like oh let me find something creative and then definitely. you get you stumble into music yep definitely. did you um so you, we, you mentioned that you started producing when you're like 19 or something and that was because you started rapping but when did you first start rapping um i probably like wrote a couple of verses in high school uh-huh. messing around or whatever but like um when I was 19, I started, like, performing live in Portland. Like, was, like, doing shows when I was 19 or whatever at mm. bars and stuff like that. And then from there, it just never stopped. Like, until I moved, you know, like, I moved in 2015. So, like, it was, it's just been, like, nonstop. You moved from Portland to the Bay, correct? To the Bay, yeah. Okay, okay, yep. okay. So, kind of coming from that background, like, when did... I, when did rapping kind of take the backseat to your production? Because I know you mentioned that, like you said, like you now you're trying to get back into rapper mode. Like when did that kind of transition come and you started focusing on production more? First off, like I'm not trying to get back in rapper mode. People are trying to force me back into rapper mode. Like really? Like, weekly, people are like trying to get me to drop a project and rap and like drop <laughs> songs. <laughs> the show was like, all right, I'll finally take a show. Like I've been getting show offers. Like, yeah. I've been getting paid feature offers you know what i'm saying I, as a I, rapper yes the other yeah. day like when i turned it down i was like damn this has really gotten to a point like i've actually turned down a page a lot now. of income, like this yeah. like it's, it's, it, it might be done you know what i'm saying but um um well i'm sorry what was the question oh i was asking when did you kind of get back into that space where that you're in now where you want to start rapping again yeah like i'm still trying to f- see if i want to really you mm. know what i'm saying this show was like part of that like see if i see if this sparks any sort of interest and in, like if i want to rap again but honestly like i'm having so much fun as a producer right now that i really like i'm i'm just like not that interested in being a rapper at the moment you I know get what i'm it, saying man, like yeah. i might still do some stuff here and there but it takes a lot of energy. Of course, yeah. You know, it takes a lot of energy, and there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of dope rappers, and I'm working with so many dope rappers right now that are like, you know, I I love hearing what they have to say over my beats. You know, mm. that that's a, that's it's funny you say that because I almost feel the same way about interviewing people. You mm-hmm. know, it's like I always feel like I'm like the. I'm like giving somebody a platform to tell their story, and that's almost kind of what you just said. It's like yeah, yeah, as yeah. a producer, you're giving a rapper a beat or a platform or instrumental Bro. to literally tell their story. Exactly. And that's like part of the whole thing is like I, I'm giving people these soundscapes and these like this landscape for them to draw their painting. You know what I'm saying? Mm. They can go crazy on it. And I'm, I enjoy hearing what somebody else has to say and, and you know what I'm saying how they would approach it and all these all these type of things you know what I'm saying I, I love it I love it I'm happy to hear that because I feel like the industry needs more people like that yeah I think there's a lot of selflessness to that you know it's like instead of wanting to be the face giving somebody else an opportunity to do that yeah and I've had I had like I was saying earlier like I had I had so much fun as a rapper already you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying like I had a whole career as a rapper went on tour collaborated with people that I used to listen to opened for amazing people you know what I'm saying I'm like I had so much fun more more than what I had thought when I first started like when I first started I just wanted to like rap and get girls you know what I'm saying it wasn't nothing <laughs> yeah. serious like I didn't think I would be like doing this the stuff I did you yeah. know so like I'm already like damn anything from here is a plus you know no, so then, I get it and then like with with production the sh- has gotten even bigger you know like we've done even more stuff as a producer than i was able to do as a rapper you know it's cool that you like you kind of dictated your future based on what felt the most fun yeah. i feel like that's definitely yeah, a lost yeah, yeah. art bro because that's what it was man i moved down here i went on tour i did all this stuff and i was like um you know i was getting like a decent amount of like love for my music and getting blog love and all this type of stuff but i just was like I wasn't having fun and I had a conversation with my friend and he was like, man, it seems like 
making beats you know come so easy to you like you can you can make a beat without even thinking about it but like making a song is a little more like energy and like stress and like you're a little more harder on yourself so i really took that conversation to heart and started thinking about it and just like went with the current of where my life was taking me you know And, and that's valuable like i think people underrate feeling people underrate like when something feels like you're doing the right thing or yeah. something feels like you're doing the wrong thing. Totally. And I know it might, it might sound simple, but it's like that feeling is there for a reason. Like mm-hmm. a lot of the, I think more people need to live like truly in the moment. And I'm one of them. I need to live more in the moment. I think everybody does mm-hmm. because it's like what you feel in the moment should be the thing that's dictating your future. Yeah. Working as like a uh, producer and, you know, doing beats or people like LaRusso or like E40 or people you've worked with, is that like – more gratifying as a producer than it would be as a rapper like i know you said you rap with people who like you know you grew up listening to did it feel different as a producer it's a great question um i think it i think it did because i feel like um as of until recently this is the first time like like people are really listening now yeah you know um before when i was rapping like like i had support and i had fans and stuff like that but now it's like bro i have so many people that i mean you know i don't i would never know there's strangers you know what i'm saying mm. Mil- you know we were, were about to hit probably our fourth go on our fourth million stream this year you know and it's like congrats um, bro it's awesome thank you and it's just gotten big you know it's bigger yeah. than like uh, the stuff I had achieved before. So it, it, it does feel amazing. Like every day I wake up and someone's posting, go get that bag. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That feels yeah. amazing. Like that's an amazing feeling. So um, yeah, it feels it feels great. Like we're, where it's at right now, for sure. Do you ever struggle with like, it's, it's funny that you say like you're doing numbers and do I get these opportunities before that you never could have imagined. Mm-hmm. Do you ever struggle with like imposter syndrome or anything? Like All does it time. ever feel weird that you're in this position? All the time. How every do you day. kind of break out of that? I don't know. Every day I'm still trying to figure that out. Like even in the conversation when I was talking to Osagi, I'm like, I was telling him like, you know, one of the challenges when I'm in the, when I'm in the studio with good producers and he's like, like yourself. I'm like, yeah, yeah. but in my head, like, I'm like, I'm in the studio with all these amazing people. And, but every day, you know, even with the success we've had, I'm still like, I still get this, still fight that feeling, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think part of it is not being a real, not being a trained musician and like, stumbling my way into like music production because like i there's obviously like some sort of by ear like natural ability i have with music but it's like Mm. it's like being able to speak a language you never studied like i'm like i get that damn like these words are just coming out of my mouth like my i just be shit just be happening yeah you know what i'm saying like so i think that's part of it where i'm like damn i don't even know how i did it Mm. you know i just made all those beats i made all those beats but i can't like you know what I'm saying? I, don't, I just got whatever God, whatever works through me, like as a vessel, I'm, and I, I'm created all this stuff, you know. But and whatever, and the crazy part too is like, if you can't even understand how you did it, how can you understand how to deal with the results of it? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm somebody who like creatively, I believe in like the muses a lot. I I, I think about like the creative muses a lot. It's like I feel like if you give enough creatively, you will get back ideas. You will mm-hmm. get back inspiration. It's yeah. like, and I, I'm not even like a deeply religious or spiritual person, but I do believe that like there is some strange like ether that we can't see in creativity mm-hmm. that kind of does like implant these ideas into our head. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Do you ever feel like, are there moments in time where you feel way more inspired to create than others? Like, how do you kind of deal with, like, I, I guess, I don't even like using this word, but, like, the, the term beat block, you know? Like, how mm. do you break out of those spheres or those those moments in time where you're kind of having problems, like, yeah. making a beat? That's a great question. Try to, I try to take a step away, and, like, um, exercise is a big one. Like, literally, mm. exercise is, like, a big energy changer for me. And then... Um, Honestly, I, I do watch a lot of tutorials and stuff like that. Like when I'm kind of feeling uninspired, a uh, tutorials like kind of get me back on my get me back on my grind to go make something else or whatever. Um, but yeah, like um, I think exercise is huge and just like kind of living life. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Getting outside, t- turning off the phone, that type of shit, and just like man, getting some sun and just getting outside, doing doing stuff, and like taking for me, kind of like taking care of all the stuff I need to do. Like, like this sounds funny, but like if my apartment is clean and like my dishes are done and all this stuff and like everything's like I'm kind of OCD. So like I dusted it, I dusted everything. Everything's smooth. I'm like, yeah, I'm about to make some shit. I'm about to make some shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to drop some heat.